Enjoying yourself? Oh, mate, I'm enjoying the time, yeah. Okay, so we connected a few things up. We've got the fuel sorted, the petrol connected up to the lift pumps. Uh, we've got some brand new oil, some vintage SAE 50 to go in. This is the oil tank. This is the feed in for the oil. Um, and this is the return out of the engine back to the tank. I'm going to put that in there. So I'm going to have to have a look inside the magnetos, make sure they're sparking before we try and start it. I'm also going to have to prime the oil pump before we try cranking it over. So I'll put that funnel in the top of that pipe, pour some oil in, and that should prime the oil pump. I've also connected up my oil pressure gauge. So as I'm cranking the engine before I start it, if I can see that rising, I know the oil is circulating around the engine so it won't seize up. So as I mentioned a minute ago, I'm going to backfeed the oil pump to prime it. I do this by backfilling the pipe that goes to the oil filter. The next step is to remove the distributor caps and take out the rotor arm. I then use a cable tie to hold the cap out of the way while I remove the rotor arm. There you can now see the rotor arm. This is the in-mag. Uh, it's actually in really, really good condition in there. I'm quite shocked, actually. But I need to take this off to gain access to the points behind. These rotor arms are extremely fragile, so I have to be really careful with these. Now that's off out of the way, you can see, or well, when the camera focuses, the uh, points themselves. There's one, and there's the other. You can see some slight corrosion around the ends, um, so we're going to have to give them a bit of a clean. Another job I need to do is connect the earth wires so I can actually stop the engine when it's running. The earth wires go in here, and all they do is basically ground the mag out to stop it from sparking which then stops the engine from running and that's done with this cable here that I'm about to put in. The oil's now had plenty of time to prime the pump so I'm going to put the filter pipe back on and connect that up nice and tight. Next job is to fill the engine oil tank. This would have been a lot easier if my dog hadn't have chewed up my best funnel for this. Um, but I did the best I could. Next, I start by taking to bits exhaust mag, and I can do the same again. Cable tie the cap out of the way and get the rotor arm out. Now, the rotor arms actually have centrifugal overrun protection, so you can't rev the engine too hard and blow it up. Again, the magneto looks in perfect condition. Tiny bit of corrosion on the points. But we'll clean them up now and... Uh, we should be good to go. There is a fair layer of corrosion on the end of these points. And again, because there's two mags, you need two earth wires to kill the engine. Now so it'll carry on running on one. Now you need pretty good batteries to start these engines. The faster you can actually make them turn over, the easier they start. When running them for the first time, I always connect my charger on boost at the same time. Right now we know both mags are sparking quite well at the points. Next thing to do is clean up the caps. There's a bit of corrosion on these, and then we'll actually try it for the first start. I then pull the throttle twice to inject some petrol into the bore. Okay, 
it seems we don't quite have enough fuel pressure, so Jack starts to prime the lift pumps. We also put a cap full of petrol down the ear of the engine to give it a boost of fuel. Good After all that excitement, I thought it was time to get the spark plugs out and give them a clean. Uh, up here. Still lube in the end of the spark plug, look at that. Oh, that was in far too tight. A little, little bit shut up. I'll clean you up while you... Uh... Okay, so we've seen it really now, finally, and it did run pretty well. The initial trouble we were having was the magnetos not sparking. The points themselves had actually just stuck together over time, and just a tiny bit of corrosion had made the two points that actually make the spark stick together. So we scraped them off with a knife, and they were sparking like a trooper. We normally actually have to take them off and run them up in a drill, but they were in real good condition, so I was quite impressed with that. The other issue we were having trouble with was the fuel pressure. So we weren't actually getting enough fuel to the carburetors initially, hence why we were using easy starts, just to get a bit of a pop to try and get the engine to spin over and suck a bit more fuel in. Uh, the two carburetors are actually Zenith carburetors, full brass, they're massive great things. They do hold quite a lot of fuel and it takes quite a bit of time for the fuel to come up from the can to the lift pumps and into the cars. But with a bit of perseverance, she uh, she started up and run, run all right. So the next part of this puzzle is we're going to put this engine, when Jack's finished painting, in the Centurion. But let's have a look how Jack's getting on there. So Jack's painted inside the engine bay. He's obviously also got rid of a lot of the, uh, the existing oil and dirt and just got a good old spruce up. I've got a little coat yet. He's got a little bit of coat yet, it's pretty slow. Um, the radiators, obviously you can't get new radiators, they're like impossible to find. But they are in pretty good condition. So although they're a little bit, little bit of thin to dent in places, we'll straighten them out and they should be all right. Coat of paint, they'll look, they'll look pretty good and they'll work all right. So the next, the next part, um, so the next thing we're going to do when Jack's finished painting, probably in the next video, or hopefully in the next video, we'll definitely be putting that engine into that gap. So that, so stay tuned for the next video of the Centurion A3 progress.
same person used to push his teeth. 